Oh, I just mean an another day, another wonderful Joe Judge anecdote. Nope, yesterday he didn't tape <laughs> tennis balls to his lineman's hands, nor did he do a slip and slide to talk about ball security. He didn't like the way practice was starting, so he said, you know what, guys? And they're like, laps? Like, no, no, not laps this time. We're restarting practice. Just start fresh like a theater director would do. Another take. He's the Brian De Palma of our time, the Martin Scorsese of football. We'll have another take at that from the top, gentlemen. Joe Judge. And guess, I'll give you a spoiler alert later on the show. Look for the Giants to upset the Steelers on Monday. Arr, Joe Judge, watch this. Oh. No, don't look for that, America. He just America. gave it to us. Don't look for oh. that. Uh, That's a bad idea. Brandon, you love the Sean break. Watson taking a bench break. Bench break? What? Look, look. he drops back. He looks for his guy, D-Hop. He's not there. What does he do? He takes off. Then he goes to the bench uh. and he sees Mahomes. He's like, buddy, I don't have D-Hop, but what we do have... We have $600 million collectively. I thought it was a, a cool moment in the opening game of the NFL last night. This shows the power of football. You can be on different teams and come together. America needs this. I love it. I love it. All right, Nick, speaking of D-Hop, oh, go ahead. Oh, boy. Well, you know, so if it's not bad enough for my good friends in Houston last night, the Rockets get annihilated, the Texans get embarrassed, and then coming off the top rope is DeAndre Hopkins with this tweet. Just a cryptic grateful. Yep. He's out there chilling. He's in Arizona. He's probably at Cliff Kingsbury's palatial <laughs> estate, looking like uh, looking like a house out of a movie. Watching these games, like, can you believe I used to have to play for these guys? Like, look at this. They trade. They trade for Brandon Cooks. He's not involved. They give Randall Cobb 18 million bucks. He's MIA until the final drive of the game. I'm just out here chilling, hanging out with you, drinking my ties. So. It wasn't really necessary by DeAndre Hopkins, but it was appreciated. That's a good tweet, DeAndre. All right, moving on. Nick, you inspired oh, me. So what, what? what's the one thing we worry about when a team wins the Super Bowl? You mentioned it off the top. We worry about a hangover. Well, well what are the tall tale signs of a hangover? Well, you... You know, you get up, you're kind of moving a little slowly. Maybe you're like wearing pajamas all day. Oh. You want to stay in your robe. You got your slippers. You know, you don't want to do anything with your hair. You That's just great. Oh, Moko Hardman from the Chiefs walking in, proving my point. This is going to be a hangover. And then the Chiefs go out and they roll <laughs> over the Texans and they make me look like a moron because I had this thing all planned out as soon as this game was about to start. But, Nick, I will tell you this. I do indeed stand mildly corrected for that. All right. Tough, tough night in Houston overall. The other big story, game four between the Rockets and Lakers, and it was just too little, too late for the small ball Houston Rockets. Fallen behind big early. Couldn't overcome a 2 of 11 shooting night from James Harden. 2 of 11 for those of you who perhaps didn't hear me the first time around. Anthony Davis was great. LeBron was great. One assist shy of a triple-double. And the Lakers take a 3-1 series lead with the win. But the story in this one, James Harden. Here he is after the loss. James, in the game with so much at stake, why did you guys seem so flat through three quarters? Good question. <laughs> Who, if, if I may infer a little from the body language and the lack of actual words, not great, as Nick said. Nick, what do you make of James Harden's disappointing night and then subsequently uh, his reaction to the question afterwards? Yeah, there's this bad, bad spot for James. And it, I understand last night this, this game's going on during the football game, so a lot of people probably weren't following it closely. It, the Lakers were wildly disrespectful to the Rockets last night. They played 19-year-old rookie Talon Horton Tucker early to get him going in case they need him later in the playoffs. They, they stopped playing entirely with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. They're up 23. They just quit, and the Rockets mounted a bit of a comeback. And they did, they did all of that because they were that confident they were going to win, which is in and of itself an indictment on James Harden. If you have sitting across from you in a 2-1 series, one of the best players in the league, one of the greatest scorers of all time, you can't have the approach the Lakers had yesterday. But they did anyway. 
And what it says about Harden and that Harden didn't rise to the occasion is something of a glaring indictment. It reminded me of about four years ago, I think it was 2016, a LeBron Cavs team was 2-2 in the Eastern Conference Finals against Toronto. And he was asked about it and he said, listen, I have faced adversity in my career. This ain't adversity. And I was like, oh my God, how insulting to the Raptors. Now he was right, but that's the level of insult that the Lakers levied at the Rockets, which means levied at James Harden. Yeah. And I, Brandon, as a guy who has defended Harden for years, it's getting harder to defend these performances. Yeah. Two of 11, you'd yes. like to say it's an outlier, except somehow, Brandon, it is his third two of 11, exactly, huge playoff game. They, the game five yeah. against the Warriors in 2015, I believe, the game, I believe he had a concussion, game six against the Spurs in 2017. And now last night, two of 11, two of 11, two of 11. And you're see I know it wasn't technically an elimination game, Brandon, but their season was on the line and he doesn't show up. And, and their season was on the line in game seven the previous round. And he had the great block, but he was bad offensively. It's just, this is becoming, you know, a pretty thick dossier of some James Harden really tough, high-leverage playoff moments, Brandon. Yeah, uh, let me try a different angle here, Nick, because you're, you're right. It's, it's hard to continue to root for this guy or to try to talk X's and O's. Uh, let me try the, per, the player's perspective. So when I watch this game and you see James Harden's lack of emotion, you see him after the game and he's detached, it just goes to show that the headlines is getting to this guy. So let's go back before the series. One of the things I said was this series will be determined by James Harden. And when you go 2 for 11 again, you are determining the outcome of this series. So what do I mean by the player's perspective? I remember in 2011 playing for the Dolphins and, and literally playing really bad. And we had a game on Fox, and I, and I just remember walking out of the tunnel and thinking about, Troy Aikman is probably, he probably has a graphic up of my drop balls on third down, my drop balls in the red zone. And I'm literally picturing Troy Aikman talk through his points with the graphic. And I'm going through my pregame warm up thinking about what Troy Aikman and what these guys are talking about. That's bad. Because what ended up happening is I went from three years in a row catching 100 balls to catching 80 something balls. And that was the first moment where I realized like you cannot read the headlines. You have to double down on who you are. James Harden is a guy who dominates the basketball. James Harden is a guy who's okay on defense. What did he do? He flipped the script this series. He's flipped the script this entire playoff in the bubble. He's done the opposite. He's tried to dominate on the defensive side. He's tried to get guys involved on the offensive side. That's not who, who you are. James Harden is a guy right now who's letting the media get to him this is deeper than basketball a lot of people are talking about well does he get tight what's going on he needs to feel comfortable with who he is in these moments think about some of the greats you can go to your guy LeBron James LeBron James have bad games all the time but what does he do he follows it up with the monster game we just saw game two not so good game three what did he do 26 points in the first half like, that's what the greats yep. do. So there's something there that James yeah. Harden needs to fix because, wow, this is a disturbing cycle. So so I'm not going to put it all on James Harden. I'm going to put it on the organization and just the game plan in general. So, Nick, last night what I think we saw was the last call for small ball. It's pretty much over now. LeBron's a 13-0 in 3-1 games. This might be it. There's going to be ramifications across the entire organization. I don't know who's going to lose their job and who's moving on to have a different uniform next year. But the Rockets that you know are not going to be the Rockets that you see next year. So look at this. And this is the graphic. I, I, I don't have your, uh, your football graphic, but I got this one. I guess Harden's thinking about me. They made 14 threes. Okay, here's the other problem. They only shoot 33. And I think I told you to win this series, Nick. They need to shoot 63s. And Frank Vogel went full Takashi. He said, I'm not even going to let you get the chance. They're averaging 39 for this season. And then they're...